Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into parametric curves and now go over uh, super ellipses and go over a brief introduction into it. And it's, yeah, it's a very interesting topic. Someone on uh, YouTube just mentioned it and I never heard of super ellipses before. So I thought I might as well just go over a brief introduction and it's actually quite fascinating. Before I get to it, a useful tip if I'm going too fast or too slow, you could play this video at a different speed. I noticed that YouTube has this feature and it's quite, uh, quite fascinating. I use that actually a lot. It's very useful. So yeah, ch check it out for yourself. So let's look at uh, super ellipses. So this is from its Wikipedia page. Just copied it over here. A super ellipse, also known as a lame curve after Gabriel Lame, is a closed curve resembling the ellipse, retaining the geometric features of semi-major axis and semi-minor axis and symmetry about them, but a different overall shape. Uh, there's some technical terms for it. Well, we'll get to it in a bit. It'll make more sense. It's so the one thing I don't like about Wikipedia. Just a lot of the stuff is just too technical. And anyway, so in the Cartesian coordinate system, the set of all points x, y on the curve satisfy this equation. In the Cartesian, remember that's just the normal x, y axis coordinate system. And the equation for a um, yeah for a super ellipse is x over a. Uh, absolute value of it to the power of n plus y over b absolute value all to the power of n and then this equals to 1 where n, a, and b are positive numbers they're all greater than 0 and the vertical bars uh, represent absolute value of the number and now in parametric equations the way it's written is is like this where x equals x is a function of theta so the parameter is theta equals plus or minus a cosine 2 over n theta and then y is uh, equal to plus or minus b times sine 2 over n uh, theta. And where theta is defined as uh, greater than greater than or equal to 0, but less than pi over 2. Yeah, so for this uh, parametric equation, notice there's going to be four options. You're going to have plus uh, on the x side and then minus on the y, or plus plus, or minus plus, or minus minus. And there's some specific cases here, but here's a uh, calculator that I, I put everything into this Desmos calculator and you can check it out and I made this so it's pretty amazing you could uh, yeah, if you just play around with it so let's just pause all of this stuff here and just to show you some of its features this is absolutely amazing this calculator is this is probably the greatest calculator I've ever uh, seen and it's online too for free which is cool so what we have is here we have the X over a uh, the Cartesian equation if I press this, it, it removes it, but I also have it uh, here. I'll just hide everything here. I'll just, I'll basically, you can tap to hide everything just to go over it slowly, what these all, all mean. So if I click this, this shows a Cartesian, a Cartesian graph here where A and uh, B and N, you can change them, etc. And you can change, if you click it, you can change what value and what step size etc and you can also play an animation of it so you could move it around and if you play it let's just see what happens to it so number it's all greater than zero so notice it's getting bigger becomes a circle becomes uh, just a random shape like it looks like a football there and yeah so as you can see it just moves around you could pause one and then see what happens with different values you could pause this and see what happens there just pause it and move it around so yeah, you can play around with it, some really cool stuff. And now if I uh, hide this, now look at the Cartesian one. Remember I said it can have multiple values. Here it's between 0 and pi over 2. Uh, because we had the plus or minus, so we have four different shapes. If I click this, that's just one part of it. That's when they're both positive. Now if we have one minus, we'll have the other shape. And now if we have minus, then plus, we have that. And now if they're both minus, we have this. And here what I've done is I've done the exact same thing. I just copied and pasted those four, uh, four parametric equations. But now I changed this t variable. And this one, you can't put theta, so I just put t. So notice the t is the same as theta. Just ignore, uh, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. And now I just made it p so that I could basically change these values. Uh, so when you do it like this, when you specify a value, you'll see the point actually show up. So that's, for example, here is p set of t just so we can change the p and then when you change it notice how it moves this is absolutely amazing so with this you could see the parametric equation moving as you do that and here I'll, I'll show all of these and these are showing all the points 
on every single curve and you can play this and you can see the move you can change the speed of it moving see how this is so the faster one is over there and you can see the rate that it moves as well I'll just slow it down like that so that's some cool stuff as well and then let's show this and again here it just it's it this is already covering it now if we play it all and you can change the speeds at different speeds it goes and notice how it's all moving this is absolutely amazing and you can see it like that and make it just go a bit slower it's a bit laggy because it's so much stuff going on at once but yeah anyways this is quite amazing uh, kind of curves and look how it's all changing so I will just pause all of this and now look at some specific cases so specific cases is when we have uh, n is between 0 and 1, we're going to have a shape that looks like this. And here, for the specific one, is when a equals 1, b equals 1, and then n hat is at 0. 0.5. So when n is between 0 and 1, let's go and see what this looks like over here. So when n is between 0 and 1, let's put this as 1, and now we play. So between 0 and 1, and then play this and play that. So notice how it's all moving around like that. So yeah, let's just uh, play these as well. Let's just see how this looks like. So yeah, it goes like that. Actually, it's, it's a bit laggy. I'll just pause these. Okay, here I just uh, quickly uh, just hit all these stuff and I'm just showing this by itself. So just hit all that just to try to make it a bit smoother animation. Let's just make this faster. And just to show you, so for the case where 0 is between 1 and for n is between 0 and 1, we have a shape that looks like this, where what we end up having is this uh, kind of spiral-like shape. So we have this, this super ellipse looks like a four-armed star, kind of like that, with concave inwards curves. So in other words, these are concaving in, like that on the sides. And for n, n equals 1 over 2 in particular, each of the four arcs is a segment of a parabola. So these, in fact, are just part of a parabola, each one of these shapes like that. And, and that's because of this 1 over uh, 2, where now we have a power of, uh, well, this is power of 1 over 2, but you move it around, you're eventually going to have a power of 2, which is uh, just a parabola is defined by. And now in other cases, when we have n equaling to 1, what we end up having is a rhombus with corners plus or minus a and 0, and then 0 and plus or minus b. So where, again, a is over here, plus or minus a. This is going to be the plus a, I believe. And here is the minus a. In this case, we have it as 1. And then b is on the other sides right here. This is plus b. And this is minus uh, minus b over here. In this case, it's going to be negative 1. It looks like this. And we could, again, test this out. So if we force this to be 1, I'll just change this into 1 like that. So we have a rhombus. And we, if we fix it as 1 and then move the a and b changes, it's just going to be changing accordingly. Let's slow this down, see what happens. So yeah, we just have a rhombus, different kinds of shape. And remember, a rhombus is... It's like a uh, tilted uh, rectangle with, basically, these are all, uh, this is parallel to this side, and this one's parallel to that, etc. So these are parallel to this, and this one is parallel to this, like that. So that's uh, rhombus. Now if we have n is uh, between 1 and 2, we have a shape that looks like this. It's kind of like a curved, kind of like a rugby ball almost, and this is for, I have it as n is 1.5, a and B is 1. So the curve looks like a rhombus with those same corners, but with convex outwards curved sides. So instead of curving inwards, it's curving outwards like that, kind of like that rhombus. The curvature increases without limit as one approaches its extreme points, which I believe those are, uh, I think those are like over here or something like that, where it's getting higher and higher until it's like perfectly flat like that. I think that's what it means. And again, this is just from my from Wikipedia, so I think that's what it means. It's just curving infinitely there. Yeah, at these extreme points. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's just going to be an infinite uh, or like flat or vertical extreme point. And again, we could test that out. This is when n is between 1 and 2. So let's go over here and let's play this and make this between 1 
and two, and see what happens. Press play. Whoops, this is, make this uh, 1.5 equals 1.5, and then this is gonna be one and two. So yeah, so you can see it's, it's just gonna be curved edges like that, curved uh, outward like that. Let's speed this up. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it is curved outwards. Make this even more so. It's a bit too slow. Let's see how this looks like. So yeah, that's uh, that's how the shapes just move around and change. It's pretty cool, kind of like a football at some values of a and b. So another specific point is if when n is equal to two, what we end up having is just a circle, and you can see. This is just two absolute value is just squared, so then the absolute values are still always going to be positive, so you don't need those. And we just get a basic uh, circle when A and B are equal. In other words, we just get a basic ellipse, and you can read more about ellipses in my earlier videos, as well as circles. So the curve is an ordinary ellipse, in particular if uh, a circle of A and B equal each other, like here where A equals B and equals 1. So we just have a circle with radius 1 like that. But then if you have A as uh, less than 1, uh, we're going to have a vertical ellipse. If B is, well, yeah, if B is greater than, one, uh, greater than A, we have a horizontal ellipse. And again, you can test that here. And that's by changing this as 2. And, and uh, let's just pause this and make it 2. Like this. Okay. So, so yeah, we get an ellipse like that and it's changing with A and B are changing and eventually when they're equal you get a perfect circle there. Let's make this slower. Like that. So let's see, would it get to a circle soon just to show you how it's moving. Eventually it will be. I have these different rates changing. Let's see it. I think it should be a circle. Oh the, oh, the end is changing. That's the problem I've had. N is two and pause. Why is it not two? Whoops. Okay, so okay, now that's better. Now it looks like a circle. I don't know what was happening before. So uh, we're getting a circle. This is just a regular ellipse and eventually when these equal each other, when this is, yeah, so it's about getting close to equaling and we'll see we will get a circle and yeah, there's our circle shape and I was changing back to regular ellipse. So that's another specific point. And now another one is when we have n is greater, uh, n is greater than two. So when is it, n is greater than two, what we have, it looks like a, it superficially looks like a rectangle, but with rounded corners. In this case, I have a equals b and uh, equals one, n is four, so it's greater than two. We have something that looks like this. And uh, the curvature is zero at points uh, plus or minus a and zero, and zero plus or minus b. So in other words, at these points, we have a uh, zero curvature. It's just flat like that. And this is flat, etc. there. So yeah, let's see what happens over here. Let's just go and change this where we have this between two and let's go with five and play and see how this shape changes. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna see a uh, rectangular-like shape with rounded edges, and this is changing the values. Let's see what happens. So there is our shape, just a bit changing for different values, but that's the kind of shape we get, even on the vertical side as well. So that's some cool stuff there. And now, uh, just, uh, just some definitions here. If n is less than two, the figure is called a hypo ellipse. Uh, like the ones above, where it's kind of like a, like a star or whatnot, and and a rhombus. But if n is greater than two, the figure is called a hyper ellipse, and the extreme points of the super ellipse are just plus or minus a and zero, and zero plus or minus b, and in fact, its four corners typo there, its four corners are plus or minus s times a and plus or minus s b, where s is actually equal to uh, two to the power of one over n. And this is sometimes called the superness of it. And yeah, hopefully in later videos I'll go over it. I believe that's that's represented by these points. I'm pretty sure on that. 
Yeah, so these, these are the corners, and it's different for whatever kind of shape. And I believe this is also a corner there. And the extreme points are over here, like that. Let's put it like that. Those are the extreme points. It's just erase this for neatness. And uh, yeah, so we have corners like that. And then uh, on the more obvious one, yeah, this one, the corners, you have to double check, but it could be over there. But I believe it's somewhere like that. And yeah, I think that's somewhere over here, the uh, corners, I'll have to double check. But anyways, this is pretty much it for today. I just wanted to go over the graphs and playing around with it, and also just going about the parametric equation, showing how it's uh, four different equations, well, two, you have four different sets of equations, because you have the plus or minus on both sides. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. If you learned from this brief introduction on super ellipses, and also going over that Desmos calculator of it, and the animations of it moving around. It's quite amazing. I highly recommend playing around with it and just creating your own graphs. This is quite amazing. Anyways, this is all for today. Hope you learn. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the uh, video description below. And thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.